Hello and welcome to the second Fabric Spotlight series where we discuss topic with investors and entrepreneurs in the cloud and infrastructure space. Uh, my name is Rajan Raghavan and I have the pleasure of introducing to you two exceptional guests. Abhishek Shukla, Managing Director of GE Ventures and Ron Victor, CEO of IOTM. Hey guys. Hi Rajan. Hey Rajan. So, uh, Abhishek uh, leads the uh, GE team focused on uh, investing in industrial internet, cloud, cybersecurity, among other things. So Abhishek, why don't you tell, tell us a little bit about what the GE Ventures focuses and what you're investing in, sure. and, and something about yourself? Sure, yeah, so uh, GE Ventures obviously is the, G, uh, the venture capital arm of General Electric. We have multiple investing areas, uh, such as healthcare, as you would imagine, energy, mm -hmm. oil and gas. And then there is this, uh, the software team, which is uh, what I represent. Uh, and we look at things such as cybersecurity, cloud infrastructure, uh, our edge, and the industrial IoT platform, Predix, which we are building. Uh, anything as it relates to the entire platform is, is, is what I look at. Uh, I've been here about two years, and before this I was a part of the Cisco's corporate development and venture investing team, also looking at uh, IoT and cybersecurity, so I have a couple of arrows in my back. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about some hobbies? Besides investing oh, yeah. and spending a lot of money and... Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, a, a, yeah adventure enthusiast. I am a uh, certified scuba diver. I've done multiple dives in open waters with great, well, not great whites, with sharks. Uh, uh, and uh, five so far, and still alive, sitting with you. <laughs> so we'll see how, how long the lucky charm will last. Have you d d uh, done some interesting places that you can talk about? Yeah, so Bahamas, obviously right close to here is Farallon Islands, which is where yeah. great whites are. Uh, obviously I'm in the cage, <laughs> I try not to go out of that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a bunch in Caribbean, South Africa, wherever you can find some of those thrills is, is where I'm going. Excellent, excellent. Ron. Shark How Tank. Shark Tank, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I met this wonderful person, Ron Victor, when uh, the fabric was uh, looking to uh, come up with uh, an idea in the IoT space. And uh, I remember, Ron, that you liked the idea so much that you decided to buy the company, I guess. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Ron, and uh, a little bit of what uh, IOTM does? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Right. So uh, I've been in the Valley a good 25, 26 years, something like that, and uh, been a technology entrepreneur for a major chunk of them, maybe 96, so more than 15 years, and uh, done multiple companies. The last one is what brought us together, where I did a company called Wireless Industrial Technologies, which was connecting aluminum smelters, copper refineries, and zinc refineries two applications based in the cloud. And uh, through a mutual friend, we had an introduction between Rajan and me, and we both identified that yes, there is a definite opportunity and a problem to solve in that space. And that's how we got together, and that gave birth to IOTM. And um, of course, from the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, IOTM perspective, it's a three-year-old company. It's now, I think, it's been, you know, it's been three years since we, yes. since we met, yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, thank you for investing in the company. So yes, funded by GE Ventures, Juniper Ventures, March Capital. And um, uh, commercially shipping product for about a little more than 18 months. Customers in building automation, oil and gas, uh, power and utilities, healthcare, as well as now manufacturing. And we solve one and only one problem, is being able to collect data from legacy brownfield machinery send that data up to applications in public-private hybrid data centers or clouds, and vice versa, take applications that reside in public-private hybrid data centers, push them back to the edge, so that you're not depending on the WAN all the time for running your analytics, et cetera. That, in a nutshell, is uh, what we do, yeah. I know that uh, G Ventures is invested in RTM. What, what is it that got you interested, let's say, in the space, and mm -hmm. interested in the company? Yeah, so, uh, in terms of the space, obviously, you know, GE builds uh, some of the most, uh, you know, big, hot spinning things, the great assets, uh, and have been doing that for a long time. Uh, with, with these assets, 
you know the as as the company digitally transform, transformed the uh, the perspective was to collect a lot of the data from those machines uh, manage that data and be able to actually deliver an outcome obviously that is something our customers were asking us for you know uh, so we embarked on this journey uh, i would say about 6 7 years ago in terms of building out the entire predix cloud with only one objective to deliver better outcomes to deliver better utilization and better efficiency for the assets for ge uh, in that story obviously there is uh, connecting the assets is one piece uh, but then once the asset is connected you you need to secure uh, all the data which is coming in going to the right place and then while the asset is connected you need to know the data which is coming into uh, to uh, to your system is the right one or the one which you asked uh, those were some of the problems or the challenges which i started with uh, which we uh, went out and looked for solutions and i'm glad i ran into you and and, and ron uh, about about that so what what IOTM was solving for us was essentially it's it's really easy or it's 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 okay to connect one asset to one cloud or one asset eventually to somewhere who needs to see the data. What happens when you have hundreds of thousands of them? Uh, in the case of let's say light bulbs going inside a city, uh, which is was enabling, uh, or bunch of all these power turbines or or jet engines. Uh, since as soon as these assets and the number of the assets grows, so does the complexity of the kind of data, where the data goes, how do you manage that data, and then what data is really important. I know I said a lot of things around <laughs> data, but that essentially uh, was the crux of, uh, you know, we looking for a solution and we realized that it's not one person or an expert who can do all of this. Uh, and when I met Ron and, and, and you guys, uh, the biggest thing which I liked about Ron was he understood the problem. Uh, he came from a space. Uh, the biggest challenge as an investor, uh, I, I uh, you know, see is I see a, you know ten pitches on AI, ten pitches on blockchain and cybersecurity a day. But the first question I ask the people is, okay, you are trying to, uh, you know, look at a solution for GE. Have you ever been into a power plant? Have you ever been into a manufacturing facility? And if the answer is no, well, that's where I start doodling on my notebook. Uh, which is what changed the whole perspective when I when I spoke to Ron, and and that's how we hit it uh, hit it along, and then eventually one thing led to the other, and eventually invested in the company. Ron, I'm sure uh, I've heard various anecdotes from you. When you go to the field, he said somebody has been inside a power plant or somebody who's been next to an oil rig, and when you go and talk to them, do they understand what IoT means? I mean. Uh, uh, Absolute, and I, I get it. Now it's a different. Uh, we're talking three years later from where we're at the the there is enough uh, press about it in the local newspaper on a Sunday morning too, so somebody will understand. Okay, there's something called IoT at least. But when we started, absolutely not. There, there were the, nobody knew what IoT meant, and, and I can tell you today there are quite a few people on the factory floor that still you say the word AWS, and they will look at you and say, "What is AWS?" Yeah. I mean, I go into meetings today, and people will tell me, "What is AWS?" And so th these are people who are used to closed loop control systems on their factory floor that they've, they've got nothing to do with the internet or the cloud or anything of that sort. And they take a laptop, go next to the machine, type, and they do their analytics. Suddenly, we've brought in this capability of leveraging all this information and data into the cloud or now uh, back to the edge, by the way, now, which, again, we can talk about it. So, so you need to have the flexibility that something can go to the cloud and something from the cloud can come to the edge and you need that uh, the ability to move applications and data back and forth completely seamlessly in a secure what we call a dmz so you have a demilitarization zone right over here where this entire pipe is completely secure cannot be spoofed data and applications can move freely between the factory floor and the cloud and leverage the benefits of both coming back to your question does the factory floor person today know the meaning of it i think some would but i'm still willing to say that a majority don't, because they don't care about it. Why should I care about connecting anything to the internet? Who gives a damn? If you tell me something that the, the business insight I'm going to get out of, I'm going to produce more, I'm going to reduce downtime, I'm going to be more cost effective, my maintenance costs are going to go down, I'm, I will never go down. I will have continuous uptime. Now, these are things that person will immediately tell me how to achieve that. Whether you use IoT to do that or something else, doesn't mean anything. So that's okay. where I come from. 
Now, I'm sure uh, these devices, which were never designed to be connected to the cloud, are now starting <laughs> to get connected. There must be some unique challenges. Some it must keep people awake in the night. Uh, or do people, even does the factory floor operator get concerned that somebody is remotely looking at that machine or? The, the, the way to think about this is the, the unconnected machine or the machine that was completely isolated from the world was isolated for a reason, for this very reason. And it was very correct that they did it, that nobody can spoof in into this. Now, once you connect it, you bear all the complexities with deploying connectivity, as uh, Abhishek was saying. If you have to connect one machine to one cloud, it's a whole different problem from connecting a thousand machines to five different clouds. It, it's a night and day. If you look at traditional IT methodologies of doing things for something like this, call IT guy, install firewall, install VPN concentrator, call operator, get VPN, APN, write to, get two-step authentication, write protocol software adapter. Now I've connected one machine to one cloud. Now imagine replicating this time and time and time again. The whole thing is bizarre. Yeah. So one has to think of this problem completely out of the box. You cannot use traditional IT methodologies. This has to be as easy as my mother installing her DSL modem when it came home. It came home, blue cable went here, yellow cable went there, turned the button on and you were connected to the internet. The machine has to be connected that simply, but with all the security elements built in completely so that you cannot be spoofed. And that's a complete, that's a significant problem in itself just to solve. The world, industrial world versus the IT world of cybersecurity is very different. Apart from the, you know, usability challenge, the other big challenge is IT cybersecurity works on best effort basis. I sent you a packet, you didn't receive it, okay, I'm going to send it again to you. And the point which you are making in the industrial world, I sent you a packet, you should have received it. If you did not, either the equipment went down or the equipment did not come back up. So it is much more determinist. It's only one and zero. There is no best effort going on, which is why we as GE or anybody else in the industrial world can't risk of securing something which by the virtue of securing it might just bump it off the network. Got it. Which is how, how IoT becomes very, very uh, prudent and, and, and very important in, in the effort which you have to do. Thank you. That was very interesting insights. I, I want to thank uh, both of you for spending the time. Any closing thoughts uh, uh, on uh, the IoT world, where it is heading, uh, both of you? Sure, uh, I can tell you that uh, we've morphed into an edge cloud infrastructure company now. The entire thing about everything that you could do at AWS or, or what we call the cloud, now you should be able to do at the edge completely. Mm -hmm. So we've completely, IoT has morphed into an edge cloud com company where we're basically an edge cloud infrastructure to be able to connect into, to be able to push applications to take data from and to enable secure remote connectivity. In doing all of this stuff, we've been very well received in the market with the, by the Fortune 100. And what I want to say is I want to, uh, uh, you know, commend the fabric here because you guys did a phenomenal job in bringing an ecosystem of players around us from investors to potentially other CEOs of other IT companies in the valley, etc., to bring them around and give us the support that we needed to build this company. So it's been very, very good working with GE Ventures as well as the fabric. I have to commend you on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I will also commend you in terms Thank of you. identifying the, uh, the opportunity and and you know, very few people or very few organizations realize the difference between you know buying sweaters on Facebook versus trying to do something in the industrial world. So, which is very very important. I think uh, the way we are uh, taking this on, or G GE broadly as an organization is looking at it, is nobody's going to pay me for this being an IoT system. To what Ron said. People are going to pay me for our outcomes, and people are now demanding, or our customers are asking us. You know, I am not in the business of uh, maintaining jet engines. I am in the business of flying people from A to B. I'm an airline. You do whatever you need to do, and that's why outcome-driven approach are becoming more and more central. What that means is the value to me or my customers need to be outlined clearly and articulated well. Thank you, and. Uh Excited uh, to have had both of you. And uh, next time we will see the series three of this fabric uh, spotlight. I hope you enjoyed the uh, talk here.